So how are we going to make this bird box? Aha, right. So that's the uh, inspiration. There are all the various sizes of um, glued together. And I'm going to show Shed Hackers how to make it from scratch. Here's the piece of wood here, piece of pine wood. It's 15 millimetres in thickness. And it is a couple of metres long. You could use scraps. I've used scraps for the first one, but this one I'm using fresh timber. There's the design, Jake. Mm -hmm. Any questions about the design? No, I don't think so. Do you think it's okay? Yeah. Thank you. Um, and here we have some of the markings. So what I've done, I've transferred the design to here. And I think if the Shed Hackers follow my clip here, this may actually help them. So on the drawing, 150 millimetres there, which is that first piece there, which is this one here, Jake. Oh. There, I've transferred, and you can see it's that one there, and there's two of them. Yeah. And I've got to make sure it's square. This one wasn't quite square, look. Just slightly off. Can you see? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to make a better version. And we have two of those. And then these are made from two pieces joined together. Can you see? Oh, yeah. That's quite good, isn't it? With some um, PVA glue, the white mm. glue, which is this stuff here. Oh. Okay. I see that um, this piece of wood has like a repair in it. Is that from the factory or is that what you've done? Um, actually, that is um, a factory based repair, yeah. Oh. It's good, isn't it, having manufactured plywood? Yeah. Mm. And there's another one, going back to this. So there's one and two. So there's four pieces one, two, three, four, joined together. And the same goes for the gable ends of the of the other birdhouse, the ends. Okay, there's two pieces there joined. You can, oh, you can see two pieces there oh, joined. Yeah. And I just pushed them together with a little bit of PVA glue in last night and glued them. There's all, they're already obviously pre-cut. And then what I've done, I've transferred the sizes. So if I get this here, that's that there. Can you see? Oh, hold on, why are you using pen? Oh, I'm using pen because uh, I want the viewers to see it. Normally it would just be pencil. Avoid pen because it can. And there's another one, damage your work. Another one there. And you do one on the reverse. Can you see? So it goes that way. Yeah. So they alternate. Now, let me just explain. It's 45 degrees, the angle, and you can use a mitre square. So I'm just going to correct my one because I noticed my one was just slightly out. So yeah. we'll go for there, one, and we'll go for here, and then we can use the tri-square to mark in between, one there, Yeah. can you see that Jake? Mm -hmm. The tri-square allows us to have that really um, accurate 45 degrees. Another one there, and I've marked it up. Can you see? And all the sizes, Jake, yeah. I've taken from my drawing here. Can you see? Oh. All the sizes. So that 130 there, millimetres. Let's take it across. We'll equal, oh yes, the total width, 130 or whatever it was. That size there. No, it was there. <laughs> okay, um, and let's have a look at another one. Maybe the base? The base 160 there. And we take across to the base here. That's slightly over, but it can be slightly over. You can make your size slightly bigger if you want to. Yeah. Right, so um, there are all the piece, pieces. Um, let's just mark this last piece up here, the other two sides. And these will all fit together. Okay, so let's have a look. Those and those will be joined together. And then we'll do another one, actually. This is more pre-marked out, I'm just going over the lines. Okay, so these will go joined together. 
Okay. Yeah. These are joined together, and they will form the two the two roofs, roof parts. That and that will join together to form this. That yeah. and that together will form that part. And this and this will form this. Okay. Okay. Does that help? The yeah. sides. So I suppose I could just go through this to help the viewers. 130. That's 130. Therefore, that's 130. And these are 130. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so they're all 130. And it, this is 45 degrees. There you go. Okay. This is 75. That will be 75 millimetres, of course. 130. Whoops, another 130, and we know these are all the same. 130, 130, because they're all joined up. So there you go, and then that's the whole wow. project. And then there's your plywood base, and your plywood base can be 130 by 160 stroke 70. All right, 130 by 160, something like that. Okay, so in the first stage, You've got your bench hook, and we've checked all the, squ the squareness of it. Could use an adjustable. Um, oh, that's in the wrong angle. Mitre square, adjustable a bevel if you wanted to. That's an adjustable bevel, and that's just a, a fixed mitre square. Mm -hmm. Anyway, can you see how you slide it up and down, get that angle? And the first thing I suggest you do, guys, if you just move that side, Jake. Yeah. Hope my jacket's not affecting the uh, <laughs> the hammering. Okay, get that there. Get that in there. Just push that tool up there. Okay, that's square. Good. Okay, and then if you come, oh, no, that's right. Put the saw on the edge there, and you're going on the line pretty well. We can trim it up and get it all even in a minute. Start at a side angle and drag the saw towards you. Like that, just a few times. And then you can lower it and cut as you go. Don't put your fingers under it, but you can put your finger to a side. Like that. There you go. And just keep in that line there. Do you want to blow that, Jake? Right, so. And now that's square. We can double check. Yes, it's dead square. Good. Okay. And I'm going to cut all these through, Jake. Yeah. And then I'll come back to you on the clip and we'll show you um, a little bit more about the assembly and the putting okay. together, of course. That's what that means. Um, so does that help? So that's clip two, I think. And um, uh, that's the beginning of the marking out. Great. Right, that's going to be quite a problem to cut that angle and holding it there. So yeah. Jake's just asked me, what did you ask me, Jake? Um, so can we use some sort of jib? Yeah, so I've cut some pieces of scrap wood at 45 degrees and I'm going to position them so this, can you see, I can still put this in position and cut it, but it's using the bench hook in another way. And this, this is called a jig. I've made a cutting jig in effect. Mm -hmm. Drill two little holes just to hold this down. One there, bouncing a bit actually. And I've got to have it so I can get the saw past. Let's get that in. Yeah. Not brilliant, but it'll work, I'm yeah. hoping. And then I can hold this down. Yes, that'll work. I can do that for all of them. And you can see there's a 45 degrees mark. At the edge, mark it, and then bring the saw blade back and lower it as you go down. 
It must be vertical, mustn't be slightly to the side, it must be dead vertical that way. And go slowly, don't go mad, almost let the weight of the saw do the work. Okay, Joe, and what's that yeah. called? Um, a jig. A jig, yeah. Good idea, that's yours, Jake, that's yeah. your idea. And then we have, oh, that's all of them done. So, yeah. let's have a look at it going together. If you move over there, Jake, mm -hmm. we've got the 230s, we'll glue up, we're going to have to trim that one there, can you see? Yeah. And we'll glue these tonight, put that there, trim that there. That looks pretty good, that one. Yeah, we'll glue yeah. that. And then we have the two 130s at an angle. So we'll put those there. That's pretty good. A bit of trimming maybe. And then the other two. Now that needs trimming, I can see it's slightly, mm. slightly out there. And what we do when we've glued them, we'll put that on top of that and we trim them all at the same time. These are the sides. Now the sides have to be at an angle. So actually to do that, we can place, I'll just get my green pen from here, lay that on there, neatly. And it has to be flush there, level. Yeah. Yes, Jane. Shouldn't you do this after you've marked and cut both of them? Both two. Possibly, yeah. Both of those. I'm just trying to get the angle there, but you're right. There's the angle. Can you see? Mm -hmm. And that should be, if I get my mitre square. Is that right? Should that be. Um, am I gonna, yes, yes, 45 degrees. Oh, yeah. And that line there, you can then mark. Can you see? Ready? Okay. As long as this is square. This line's square, at the top's pretty good. Make a line down there. Mm -hmm. Now this is the tricky part. We'll just show you this and then we'll go to the next step. I would mm, get a clamp. We could possibly make another jig actually. Yeah. What if I could even use this, turn around? Yeah. Maybe. Sure. Do you know, we might be able to do this. But something along these lines, perhaps your adult friend might be able to help you on this. You could actually, probably your best bet, to be honest, is take this out of the vise, put this in the vise. Take your time on this, guys. Come round there, Jake. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna if you move back again. Now we've got to go vertically down the line on the waist side. Which side's the waist side, Jake? Um the smallest side. Yeah, yeah, this is the waist part. Often it's best to shade it. Okay? Younger viewers always look at where the waist is. That's the bit we want, and that's the bit with the piece we don't need. So that's the waist side and that's a good side. It's a common mistake that cutting on the actual side that you actually need. Keep it accurate, keep it vertical. If you go wrong you may have to make another one. I have had, I have had to before. Now, I don't want to cut my vice jaw, these are the jaws of the vice, so I can come slightly out, I think. Or you could turn it around. I could turn it around and remark it, that's a good point. I want to keep that line, so I won't for the moment. I'll just try it this way, because I've got a nice line there, Mark. I'm not pushing too hard, keep, keep the, 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 the sort of pressure even, not too hard. 
slowly. There you go. That's pretty good. Yeah. So we're going to do that just twice. So let's go back to the design. So that will go there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. And we'll have four of those. We'll have another one cut there. And then this will go on to here. Into there. Yeah. Like that. And then these will be the roofs. Now the roof... There's the roof when it's glued. The roof, what was I going to say about the roof? I'm not quite sure. What could I say about the roof? I uh, don't know. Does that look right? Maybe that you need to glue it together? Yes, it needs gluing, doesn't it? But you can start seeing it going together now. Okay, yeah. so I hope that really helps people. Okay, Jay, do you want to just pan on that? Keep your workplace tidy. And keep the sawdust in the bin if you can. Um, there's the bench hook we used. Yeah. Little jig. You can make up your own little jigs. Okay, right. We'll come back. And the final clip will be really about how we glued it together and how we then assemble it with a little bit of PVA wood glue. And hopefully we'll have a little product which will look, look similar to that. Probably better than that, actually. Um, and I hope you enjoy this, guys. What do you think, Jake? I think it's going to look good. Yeah, thanks, Jake. Bye. So what's next? Um, I've got to drill these two holes, Jake. Okay. Um, there's the design there. Okay, oh, and we're yeah. going to use this um, power drill. Okay, with a um, self-tightening chuck on it. And you're going to tell the viewers how Dad is going to put it, work it. Okay, yeah. so anti-clockwise, hold the chuck, and the chuck um, jaws go in. Clockwise, and you can see the chuck jaws come out. Anti-clockwise, open the jaws, so, yeah. put the drill in, 35mm, how do I know? Because it says 35mm. Oh, yeah. Hold the chuck and tighten it. And of course, on the modern drills, some of them, you just hold it and then you can tighten it like that. Yeah, that's it. Now, this, because the sharp edge of the cutter, forcing a bit, this is called, get your adult friend to help you on this, youngsters, because yeah. this can be quite dangerous. It has to be held vertically. I'm going to cut a slightly bigger hole than that one. Yes. Um, is your bench hook the sacrificial piece? Uh, yes, good idea. Right, so I've got a clip here to stop the work flying. and Everything you do, you must hold down. I'll find a sacrificial yeah. piece of wood. And Jake will explain what that is. It's a piece of wood you put under your work so you don't damage anything under it. Yeah, so it's you sacrifice that piece for the good piece, sacrificial. Mm. Okay, so we position it. If it's slightly out of position, it shouldn't matter as long as it's not to the edge here, I suppose. And then place it vertically. As I say, get your adult friend to help you. Bit of noise here on the shed hacks. I'm going to put a bit of pressure on here. There we go. There we go. A bit of a mess there. But one clean hole. One hole there. I'll drill another one there. So it's going to be slightly hot because of friction on the wood spinning. Okay, so I won't touch the end. It's cold in the shed tonight, I've got my high vis jacket on. I see you've got a spade bit there. Oh yes, I want to get shed hackers. That's an alternative. Um, it's a flat um, edge tool here. I can't remember the name of those now. Is it I think they're called bit? spade bits I think you're right. or paddle bits. Now, I wouldn't recommend these because these are terribly dangerous, I think. And of course, when it goes through, you're going to make a much bigger hole in the sacrificial layer. Yeah. Potentially into your but table. But of course, something. it'll be easier to line it up. And it, it would be. It won't wander yeah. as much. These are used on construction sites a lot, and they're a cheaper form of those. And they, you know, you can replace these much more um, cheaply than obviously the forcing bit. I much prefer the flat bottom forcing bit. 
There's the hole. Yeah. You can see. Lovely. And All we'll right. do the other one. Sorry about the noise, Chet Hackers. Position it. Get your adult friend to check you're doing it all safely or to get them to do it. Wear goggles, I would. I should have mentioned that. Wear goggles. Now, let me just find a pair of something like this. Guys. Oh, yeah. Goggles. I've got some on, which Jake didn't mention. Did you, Jake? Mm -hmm. You don't mind. Right. Don't hurt your eyes, guys. This is thing. Now, I should mention, actually, if you did really anything at that speed, anything dangling down near it should be tucked away. Long hair. If you are a student, I suppose, a tie, and if they still wear ties in some schools, um, anything that might get caught, just be careful. And interestingly, spin it as you pull it out. It helps. You don't have to put it in reverse. Some people think you have to put it in reverse. Um, for the for the smaller size holes, I just wanted to show you how because you can use these woodworking um, twist drill bits. Yeah, it has that point on it there. Can mm. be blunt and quite easy. Only for wood, not metal. I've just taken the grip off the clamp. Could use a G clamp, not a quick grip. Come there, there the holes. And actually, if you come across here, can you see? It's all coming together now. Can you see? So if you pan back there, Jake, this will go eventually on. Yes, Jake. Is that one you've already glued together? No. These two are still in... I haven't. These are the ones I'm, I'm just showing in its temporary dry state. Mm -hmm. That will go on there. Like that. And then I'll just, if you just move back there, these are bits I have glued. So these, these are to be glued, and there's one already made. Seems like um, a famous television program. Oh. What's it called? Blue something. Blue Peter, wasn't it? I'm not quite sure. Now that angle there, strangely, is slightly out, so we'll have to look at that. Yeah. See what's gone wrong there, but that's pretty good. It's pretty good, and we'll get that glued up there. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Can you see, Jake? And then, where's my base? My plywood base? Right here. Okay, Shed Hackers, can you see? It's looking, that's what it looked look like. And we'll put a hole in there, and we'll put a piece of dowel in there. Now, if I find a piece of dowel, isn't it just a wooden rod? It will be a piece of rod cut off. So I can cut that now with a tenon saw very carefully. It doesn't have to be that long. No, I'd have it so the bird can stand on it. And it has to go inside the wood itself. So allow for that. Yeah. Keep your tools um, tidy, guys. Drill a 10mm hole if it's... 10 millimeter dowel. In fact, actually no, drill a nine millimeter hole for a 10 millimeter dowel, and then that will be a nice and tight fit. So that will be poking out there. Oh yeah. Can you see, Jake? That's that's a pretty good solution, I think. Mhm. Mm no tweeting noises yet. <laughs> um, anything I've missed, Jake? Do you think? Uh, don't think so. Oh, he's knocked everything over. <laughs> Never mind. Um, just put that back, so something like that, show them the design, okay, the dowel will go into another hole there. We'll do a closing clip in a while and it will show you it all glued together. There's the design again Jake, here are the tools, mitre square, didn't mention that, or probably did, adjustable bevel that you can adjust it, Oh yeah. clever that. Forcing a bit, spade or flat bottom bit, I suppose. Yeah. Good old ruler, very handy. The dowel rod. Sacrificial piece of wood. A drill. The drill. Oh, the plane. On the plane, I will show you this. 
If you wanted to make the edges neater, so I wanted that edge to be slightly angled, I'm just going to show them this, Jake. In fact, it could mm -hmm. go that way round. That would be... That's an interesting one. Which way round? The grain probably be better down. Yeah. Might be better that way round. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a little piece off this edge to make it look neat. So put it in the vise. Like that. Not sticking out too much. Move those tools away a little bit. Oh, he's knocking it all off part again. And then there's your block plane. I hold it at a slight angle. I just want to take that sharp edge off. Now if it tries to break that end grain off there, because we're going across grain, it's best to go from this end. And you can see I'm not even yet. And then I'm going to go around the back of you. Be sharp, please. Try not to go right off, you're going to snap that grain off. Something like that. Take that. Should be a crispy sort of sound, my father used to say. Mm. Right, where's my piece of glass paper? So, right there. let's rip off a piece of this. Oh, there it is. Wrap it around. This is just a bit of um, cork. But you can wow. use a piece of wood, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, if you do. Wrap it around. And then just take this crappy edge off. And sand, or glass paper, all your sides. Nice and neatly. It's the finishing, like this, called finishing. It's really going to make your project good. And go with the grain. Keep going across it, don't scratch it that way. On the end grain, here on the end, you can go across it. But if you're going along it there, go with the grain. What's the grain, Jake? Um, the lines in the wood. Yeah. The veins, in effect, showing the veins yeah. of the wood, isn't it? Sapwood in most cases. See the angles, the bark, look, the tree would have been. Mm. Not the bark, the um the growth rings. Yeah. Growth rings. Well done. Can yeah, you see, yeah. guys? Looks really neat that. Let's put that back because Jake had a <laughs> moment of uncoordination. Um, right, I think that's a really good start to the project and good luck with it. We'll come back to you with it glued together and some extra little detail in it. Oh, mustn't forget, Jake. Yeah. Mustn't forget the bird will know. They'll know it's a shed hack model. And uh, look, there you go. I think that's, that, that's curves, it's nice. And we'll close that gap up there. Yeah. I'll plane that so that's square. And we'll glue it with some PVA. And I will put in it, actually, guys, um, some wood screws. And we may use some little brass ones even. Wow. Countersunk, probably a smaller version of that. And they'll go into there. So if the box becomes damp and the glue deteriorates, the, the screws will hold it together. How else could we hold it together, Jake? Uh, with quick grips or clamps? Well, not on the tree. Um, well, you could hold it together with nails, maybe. Yeah, some panel pins. Yeah, some panel pins. But they tend to rust, though. Don't get the steel ones if you can. You can get little brass ones. And copper ones, I've seen. Wow. Oh, yeah, I've seen little copper ones. Um, I think that's it. Any questions, Jake? No. Okay, good, Shadowhackers. Good luck.